Hello, my name is Stephen McIver, and today I'm giving you a presentation on the Assemblies of God, a quick history. All the way back in 1914, at this time a worldwide Pentecostal revival is happening. Uh, much of this has been kicked off in 1906 by the Azusa Street Revival. In Hot Springs, Arkansas, uh, minister, ministers decide to gather together uh, with a desire to fulfill common objectives. Um, the organization at that time, at this meeting, is established and name the Assemblies of God. And at this meeting, E.N. Bell is elected as the first general superintendent. In 1916, just a couple years later, uh, there was a doc doctrinal dispute. Um, whenever the Assemblies of God was first formed, they really didn't want to have a set of doctrines. Uh, they just wanted to completely rely on the Holy Spirit. But shortly after, um, there were members of the Assemblies of God uh, that were part of the new issue or the oneness theology that did not recognize the Trinity, only Jesus, and, and, and such they only wanted to baptize in the name of Jesus and not in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So out of this, uh, a statement of fundamental truths uh, were created, which affirmed the Trinitarian orthodoxy. And what's amazing is the 16 fundamental truths are still the 16 fundamental truths of the Assemblies of God today, so uh, they are standing the test of time. And also at this time, it was affirmed that uh, glossalia, it's hard for me to say, or speaking in tongues, was affirmed as the initial sign of baptism in the Holy Spirit. In 1918, just after uh, a short stays in Finley, Ohio, and St. Louis, Missouri, uh, the headquarters of the Assemblies of God moved to Springfield, Missouri. Uh, initially, it existed to publish literature through the Gospel Publishing House. And it printed the Pentecostal Evangel to help network Pentecostal believers. And many departments at HQ quickly followed uh, for organizing education, missions, and more. Diversity. In 1935, women were allowed to be, to be ordained as pastors. So not immediately. took a little bit of time. But then in 1939, as part of a dark part of the Assemblies of God history where uh, a policy was made that denied African Americans ordination at the national level. But uh, you go forward uh, many years later to 1962, and the yeah, Assemblies of God rescinded that policy uh, with Bob Harrison being pictured on the left in that picture, being a catalyst of that. In 1989, the General Council adopted a resolution opposing uh, the sin of racism in any form. And while the assembly, Assemblies of God is still mostly white constituents, that number is decreasing year over year. Missions. Uh, the AG uh, greatly contributes to missions every single year. From 1911 to 1961, Lillian Trasher operated an orphanage in Egypt. She joined the AG in 1919 and, and never received a furlough through the entire time she ran that orphanage. In 1915, Alice E. Lucy transferred her ordination to AG and became a missionary to Hispanics in Mexico and the U.S. And in 1920, Ivan Voronev went to Russia and the Ukraine. He helped organize 500 Slavic churches. He was captured and martyred in 1937. Uh, today, there are over 2,600 Assemblies of God missionaries, and there are over 67 million uh, Assemblies of God adherents today because of those missionaries and the work that they've done throughout the world. And, of course, uh, the existence for, for education. Uh, one of the purposes of the AG formation was to, to create a general Bible training school with a literary department. So, in 1922, uh, Central Bible Institute was formed uh, as the first national school for the Assemblies of God. And hundreds of schools sponsored by the AG and by churches and districts have come since then to the existence of the Assemblies of God. And in 2013, uh, Central Bible College... Evangel College and the Assemblies of God Theological Seminary joined together to form Evangel University. And in closing of this history, um, the Assemblies of God were birthed by the Pentecostal revival and hunger to see God do more. Uh, the AG is relatively young, approaching 110 years. This is young compared to many other uh, denominations that exist. Uh, the, the AG has had a fourfold mission through its existence. Uh, to evangelize the lost, to worship God, disciple believers, and to show compassion. 
that the AG continues to train and send spirit-empowered servants to carry the Great Commission throughout the world. All right, everyone. Thank you for listening. Take care.